My name is Ajumal Binding. I'm the chair of the board of Movement of Mall for Race Equity, which is also known as MORE. Each week, we're going to bring a different program to you on Wednesday at 7 o'clock and talk about issues of concern to people in our community, as well as issues related to changing the situation that we currently experience in this state, this city, and this country. And we will have guests who will talk to us about those various issues and most of all, help us to look at remedies towards changing the paradigm that affects many working class and low income families in our community. Join us each week on Wednesday at 7 p.m. from 7 to 8, where we'll have a chance to explore issues of concern, issues of the day, and most of all, issues that deal with race and anti-racism and race equity within this apartheid city that we live in called Omaha. And we've invited a number of community people to come and share their perspectives because traditionally they have not been allowed to share their viewpoints in the local media. There's a great deal of racism in Omaha, great deal of racism in Nebraska, as well as the United States. And too often people develop a level of white fragility, an inability to speak about those issues. Many people also develop what we call Negro fragility. Uh, this is folks who are African-Americans or as Malcolm used to say, so-called Negroes who don't know who they are in terms of their culture, their background. And oftentimes they collaborate with folks who undermine the community and people who are trying to move forward in progressive uh, circles and, and move up the economic ladder. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring a number of people, ask them a series of questions, issues, and then our format is to open up to the participants who join us. We understand that some people sometimes watch our programs on Facebook Live because, again, they don't want to be identified because, again, we sometimes throw out too much light. And we know that people who cannot accept light uh, tend to hide in the dark in this sense. We also know that sometimes when you get too much light, particularly the sun, you can suffer retina damage. And for some of these people, they suffer from brain disease. It's obvious by the way they behave, the way they act. One of the things we're going to try to explore in terms of our program and conversation is data. How do we talk about data? Are things getting better? Are things getting worse? How do you measure the effectiveness of an organization? And I cannot begin to tell you the number of people who are in public positions, including state senators, school board members, county commissioners who have written letters to over the years, and they, were, they will not respond. Again, we oftentimes wonder, why do people become cynical about government, both local and national, and oftentimes because elected officials or functionaries get in those positions and act as if they think and for the community and that they know what is best. And for the most part, most of our elected officials have rarely held and participated in elected forms or particular participated in community forms or with their constituents. In actual fact, the Mahal Public Schools is egregious and most notarized. Notif uh, not they're most more known for ignoring the community. I cannot remember the last time a school board member uh, hosted or participated in a, in a community forum. Uh, Bree Fuller is the last one, probably about sometime last um, fall. But other than that, I can't think of before then any of those individuals who uh, operate as the, as a clan, C-L-A-N versus K-L-A-N, and operate against the interests of the African-American and students of color. And again, that is indicated by uh, their lack of engagement as well as their lack of producing data that shows the disparities. One of the things we'd like to do is get people to give us input, feedback, and suggested topics of people who we should engage in on, on critical issues that may change the paradigm or change the conditions of our community. If you look at the numbers, uh, numbers have gotten worse in the last few years in terms of collective uh, economic up mobility for African Americans and particularly in certain parts of this community. So what we'd like to do is deal with our mission, which is more or less accountability, transparency, and advocacy towards changing the wretched conditions for many people who've lived in Omaha. And as we all know, Omaha is a very segregated and oftentimes it resembles some of those cities or towns in Mississippi, Alabama, and Arkansas because we've imported a lot of these handkerchief head, Uncle Tom, bootlicking people who can care less about our community. Again, you can look in terms of where they operate, how they behave, and their lack of discernment on some of the critical issues of the day. And so our goal is to bring a little bit of light as well as a bit of, of, of ray of sunshine to those topics that many people are scared to talk about. At the end of the day, when you know that you don't have to worry about your income, you don't have to worry about your wherewithal, so why are you quiet, quiet? Why are you acting like a, a comatose personality? 
we would like to get many of these folks to come off their benches, get off their laps of those individuals who control them, and get rid of those leases that they have around their necks or those rings that they have in their nose that is guided by people who do not serve the interests of our people. So at this point, we'd like to say, uh, let's go forward and let's from the, in, in the future see what we can do to change the scope of this community by engagement, participation, and raising critical issues so that we can change these uh, the nonprofit industrial complex. And by the way, if you look at most of the board of directors of many of these nonprofits, they are composed of people who have no sense of interest in changing the conditions for the so-called people they serve. In actual fact, it reminds me of Paul Bryan years ago where he had a program where he served about seven or eight African-American young men and he taught them how to shake hands and so on. And the United Way had to stop giving them money when they found out the program was a sham at Wesley House. Again, Paul moved on to Atlanta, Georgia, where I think he has a much better opportunity to do what he do down there. But when he was here in the community, he was an indicator, he was one of the classic indicator of nonprofits that claim they serve youth in some of these mentoring programs, and you see no changes. Teammates is another one. They have an African-American guy who's a director who doesn't return uh, any kind of correspondence or deal with the issues of our community, and most of his staff members, from all, all of them are all white women. So how do you serve people in North and South Omaha of different racial groups, and your whole cadre and your support staff are Becky's and Karen's and uh, some of the mean white girls that exist in state and local government. So we would like to again come back and talk about how do we change these situations uh, and make sure that we name it and claim it for what it is. Look forward to seeing you. Barocco.